Up next, we have another representative of Phonecta. Uh, she's going to be Hanna Selmgren, and she's going to be talking about targeted design in the case of Novosan. And um, Hanna works as a project manager, also at Phonecta. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say enterprise solutions or not, but. Yeah, Phonecta is enough. So Phonecta is enough. OK, uh, we'll give uh, the arena to Hanna. Thank okay, you. OK, thanks. So uh, as Lassie already mentioned, I'm also from Fonecta, and uh, I will be talking about uh, today's topic from a little bit more uh, practical point of view than uh, Cormac did, as I will be uh, presenting a case study. And um, before going further into the case study, I want to tell you a little bit about why we actually started working with this uh, case company, uh, Novosan. Um, tiedosta toimeen is the reason, and tiedosta toimeen is one of the biggest marketing actions that Fonecta has taken this year. And um, tiedosta toimeen is a business reality that we, we have been working on. And um, it's a reality show that you can see on Fonecta's website, and um, it's built around four companies. So um, with these four companies, we wanted to uh, prove our claim to be true. So we have been claiming that we know how to do successful digital marketing and we wanted to prove this claim in action. So we selected these four companies and uh, we built coaching teams for each of these companies. So a team of uh, professionals from Fonecta working with these four companies. And um, we started our journey in February and have had the chance to work with these companies uh, throughout the year and will continue until October. And uh, we have, through this program, built nine uh, episodes for each company that, are, that, are, that can be viewed online. And um, I got the chance to work on the team for, for um, Novosan. And we actually have Tommy from Novosan, the CEO of Novosan, here today. So he's here to prove <laughs> if I'm correct in, in making these claims of what we have done. But to tell you a little bit more about the company Novosan, I want to uh, show you a video about the company. And this video explains a little bit more about what kind of a company Novosan is and what they do. And from then on, I will tell you more about the, what we have actually done with, with Novosan and what kind of marketing actions we have taken with them. Mä oon Hanna Eräs, Novosanin perustaja. Moro. Novosa sai alkuun 2009, kun mun muutin Saksasta Suomeen. Ja ihmettelin, että minkä takia tää on huudellaan pisuarit edelleenkin vedellä. Tai mitä? Joo joo, sen takia me lanseerattiin vedetön pisuari myös Suomen markkinoilla. Paljon yks pisuaisee sitä vettä? Keskimäärin 100 000 litraa vuodessa. Uh -huh. Suomalaisten vessojen kunto on ollut häpeä, niin vessat haisevat ja vettä tullaan. Ah! Huono vessa on huonoa bisnestä. Me halutaan päivittää suomalaiset vessat tälle vuosituhannelle. Vedettömät pisuarit perustuvat fysiikkaan muotoiluun. Me ollaan asennettu Suomeen jo tuhansia ja lisää tulee. Nyt meillä on kymmenen työntekijää. Ja muutamme Suomea vessa kerrallaan. That is the company that we got the pleasure to work with. And um, so it's in the field of B2B uh, marketing that we, were, we started to work on. And um, with the products and services that Novosan offers. So for example, water-free urinals, uh, ecological solutions to public toilets. And uh, not only do they offer these products, but also services around those, around those products. And um, we started um, targeting our actions to these uh, specific types of customers. So for example, constructors, uh, constructors architects, uh, shopping malls, gas stations, and so on. So we identified those as the target, target groups for, for actions. And of course, we talked about the goals that we have for our cooperation. So Novosan wanted to, not so surprisingly, sell more to their existing customers 
and also to, to get more new customers altogether. And um, as a kind of a starting point for our, for our cooperation, we started looking at Novozyme's website. And already at the beginning, we, we talked with Novosan and we came to the conclusion that, okay, we won't start uh, rebuilding the website itself because they had just renewed their website and uh, had built their quite strong and um, different brand image around this website. So we didn't want to start changing that. But we had to do something to get more customers and sell, to sell more to these exi existing customers. So we, of course, thought, what can we do? If we don't change the website, what can we do to get more, of, more customers? So we moved on to this kind of an analysis stage. And um, we analyzed the existing customers of Novosan. So who do, who do they work with now? Who are their customers? And uh, we did a quite thorough analysis of their website. Although we decided we won't touch it, but we still want to want to see how it works now. And this heat map indicates uh, a part of that analysis. We wanted to see how people on the site behave and uh, what kind of implications that has to sales, for example. And we saw quite important uh, improvement areas. So we started thinking, what can we do around the site to improve their business? And we first started looking at the existing customers how to engage more effectively with the existing customers. And um, we realized that uh, Novosan had wanted to communicate with their customers, but they hadn't, as a small startup company, they hadn't really had the time. So the first very practical action that we, that we took was to start sending newsletters to, to the existing customers, to start engaging, and to use content that really uh, talks to the customer and to tell about the products and the, and the growing service offering that Novosan provides. So that was a starting point. But we also understood that through the actions that we take, we will be bringing more, more and more people to the site. And we wanted to, without actually touching the design of the site, to still improve it and to make it more effective. So we did work on the content on the site. For example, in the form of uh, reference stories and success stories that are, that are on the site. So I wanted to tell about the customers that Novosan already has, also to the new customers. And to really make these um, targeted stories to, to make it more easy to relate to, to the offering. Mm. Other improvements to the content on the site were also linked to engaging the customer who comes to the site. So earlier, Novosan had used, used these um, Excel-based calculators to calculate how much water a company can save by using a water-free urinal, for example. And we wanted to bring this feature to the site so that when a, customer, a potential customer comes to the site, they have more content to engage with. And also make it easy for the customer to contact Novosan. So again, trying to improve the conversion on the site. So those were actions uh, we took to improve the site itself, but also we wanted to think about how to bring more traffic to the site itself. And um, again, we wanted to take targeted action. So not just general advertising, but really, really think about who we want to talk to and why. Um, so we again went back to the initial an analysis of Novosan's customers, and um, we wanted to find more of similar customers. And uh, what we did was um, display marketing and Facebook campaigns. And the display marketing was um, domain targeted. So um, we took the customers that Novosan, Novosan had um, used um, Fonectus database to find more of similar companies and um, target it to the domains that these companies use. And um, again, these similar target groups were also used, used in Facebook marketing. In the beginning, we noticed that the conversion on the site wasn't as good as it could be. Again, 
we came across the challenge of, well, what to do on the site, how to quickly improve the quality of conversion on the site. And um, what we added to the site was a quite simple chat feature that was operated by Fonecta. So when a visitor came to the site and spent there more than 10 seconds, seconds we approached the customer, or the visitor, and um, through these conversa conversations, we were again able to provide leads to Novasan. Um, a little bit about the, of the, about the results. Mm, we have been able to bring more visitors to the site and through various different sources. So if you first look at the search engine results, we can see a trend of uh, increased amount of visitors through, through search engines. And um, this indicates that the, the content that we have, have put up on the site has been um, quality content that has improved the search engine optimization of the site. Typing the URL um, seems quite even. And that is also in line with the actions that we have taken. So we haven't done general brand advertising, for example. Advertising and social media, again, show peaks where we have done campaigns. So, so the campaigns have been able to attract more, more visitors to the site. So this is the journey that we have taken since February. And it has been a learning curve. And it has been a special context to work in. Uh, this Tiedos uh, de project and program has provided us with opportunities that we don't always have with our customers. So we have had the, well, we have had a budget, of course, but we have had the opportunity to kind of uh, choose whatever we want to include in that budget and try out different things. And. Um, that has been also a key thing for figuring out what to do next. We have taken a lot of different actions and analyzed the outcome of those actions and are now able to optimize what we will do next. And I think that's a, that's a, a great feature for any customer case, is continuous learning and optimization. But now we've had quite a long time to, to try out different things and uh, really to choose what works and with, with what has worked the best, we want to continue working with Novosan also in the future. Um, that, must, that was my story about Novosan, and I was happy that I got the chance to share it with you. And I think it has been a great journey, and we hope for it to continue. Thank you. Thank you, Hanna. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Please raise your hand. Uh, that was the first one. Uh, just say your question, and uh, I will repeat it then. Okay. Yeah, we are so, able Sorry, if I repeat yeah, the question, yeah. so it will be on the stream. So yeah. the question was about that, uh, what was the conversion? Because uh, it was showed that uh, you managed to get more uh, organic traffic, but hmm. how it worked out. Yeah, it's true that by just getting more traffic, it doesn't mean that we get a better conversion. And I didn't want to provide exact figures here now, but we have been able to, to, to track the success of the, the activities that we have taken. And it is true that we have been able to, to also improve the conversion on the site. Thanks. Uh, there was another question coming up as well. Was there? It was the same. Same question. Yeah, that's okay. what usually happens. <laughs> I have another question, which is not the same, uh, because you showed about the uh, different kind of analysis you, you did for the existing website and the existing visitors. What do you think was the most important insight that you gained from looking into current analytics and the, uh, the kind of situation before you did any changes? Sorry, can you repeat the question? What, was, what were the most important insights or the single insight that you got from kind of analyzing the current traffic at mm. before you did anything to okay. kind of change things? Um, well, what we found that um, 
maybe one of the most important things is that it, it's not enough that the first impression is that the site looks good, but you really want to dig into how the people actually behave. And uh, maybe one of the most insightful finding was that people weren't able to find the contact form. And that was uh, the amount of, for example, on the front page, the, the percentage of people actually finding the contact form was alarmingly low. How did you uh, find out what they were looking for if they didn't find it? Uh, well, we analyzed what the path of the, of the people took on the side, how, where they were moving, and how they then dropped out at specific spa uh, stages of the, of the journey. Okay. Any other? Yeah, there's one question. So the question is, uh, how much traffic do you need in order to get meaningful statistics? Well, that's a very good question. I don't have a direct answer to that about the, the amount of data. Uh, but that is uh, also the reason why we combine different sources of data. So we don't trust just one source, but we take a, a look at a very various amount of different factors influencing, influencing the behavior. Um, one question which might be also addressed to you or uh, Novosan is that uh, can you, uh, if you do this kind of project uh, for your clients as a consultancy, uh, can you, what kind of promises can you give? What, what, can, does your, what did Novosan expect or did you, did you kind of give any kind of clear uh, promises that you will increase the traffic by 100% or something like that? Mm, in this specific case, um, we didn't set these numerical targets in the beginning. I think this case has been built more around conversation with the customer, really finding out what are the important issues for them and what we can do around those issues to help them out. And again, focusing on what works and dropping out what doesn't work. Okay. Any more questions from the audience? Exceptionally, we are running even ahead of time, which is kind of extraordinary for any kind of event. Uh, so I guess not. So big hand for Hanna. Thank you for coming. <laughs>